appearance. And a deafening welcome, as you hear, for the Munster champions, which almost rocks Croke Park by its very foundations. Skippered by Nicky English, who was only eight years of age when Tip last played here in a final. He sat on his father Donny's knee. He was only eight. And the youngster in the side, of course, the young man in the blue helmet, John Lahey, or John Leahy, of Lahey it's called in Mullina Home. John was just coming up to his second birthday in 1971. And there's the young hero, Nicky English, a modest young man. And the other uh, substitutes as well, warming up. So let's take a check then on the day's team. News starting with Tipperary. Tip ringing the changes in defence in an effort to close down some obvious loopholes all too apparent against Antrim. Conrad Donovan is back at full-back with Noel Sheehy moving to centre-half and John Kennedy on his left. Pat O'Neill is omitted, so John Lahey starts at left-half forward for a team skippered by Nicky English. And some familiar names among the subs as well. <laughs> the fourth successive year here in the final. The Westerner is led by Connor Hayes with just three wins in 17 finals. And amazingly, seven players are starting their fourth successive final, including Sylvie Linane here. Also, Ollie Kilkenny and the halfbacks Tony Keady and Peter Finnerty are in their fourth successive final. That is also the case with Brendan Linsky, Joe Cooney and the skipper Connor Hayes. And indeed, Anthony Cunningham should be added to the list because he came on as a sub in the 85 final. And let's take a check then on the Galway 1 to 15. Galway's formation includes 14 of those who started against Kilkenny in last year's final. Noel Lane, who came on as a substitute and uh, scored the only goal of that game, carries an injury and reverts to the subs. Michael Coleman partners Pat Malone in a new midfield alliance and Brendan Linsky resumes life as a full forward. Interestingly, it's the same defence as played in 86 and 87 and just one change from 85. Tony Kilkenny played then at wing-back in place of Jerry McInerney. And so the temporary sides coming across then to pose for the photographs that will become treasured mementos and memories later on in the year. It's a very young Tipperary side. There are those who believe down in the Premier County that perhaps they're a little bit too, too young this particular year. Only one married man in that team, incidentally, Pat Fox. I'm sure there'll have plenty of offers if they win this afternoon. So Nicky English then, the skipper, breaking away first, but uh, they're going to be called back. A little uh, sign and indication of the attention. Nicky there on the left, Pat Fox beside him, then a Ryan. John Lahey in the middle there. Colin Bonner. It's Declan Ryan. Straight away we note, incidentally, that Joe Cooney has switched with Brendan Linsky. And the Linsky is now on the 40. Cooney is full forward. And away they go. John Lahey has it broken up and it's taken down by Pat Malone down towards Michael McGrath. For the lead score for Galway in low. Conrad Donovan back there. Up towards John Kennedy. Takes it with difficulty. Nice style. They'll take it into the forwards. Towards Aidan Ryan. A high and hard challenge that time from Sylvia Lenin. Goes unpunished. Tony Keating cuts it away. Tony O'Connor here. Serving it in towards Nicky English. Kilkenny with Pat Fox. Ali Kilkenny following up, out to Silver and in it comes. This is it. John Lahey applying pressure. Referee's whistle sounds for that foul on Silver and Who Oh, it's getting a little heated early on. The tension of the occasion spilling over a little. The referee will move in quickly to defuse that. sound right at the start of this match in Croke Park. Loads of atmosphere. Michael McGrath. 
throw down the middle. Under it, but not too comfortably. And O'Ryan was going in there and over in had to be smart and quick. After Colin Bonner it comes. Tony O'Connor, one hand there, up towards Pat Fox. But their fast comes out over the end line and wide. So no score. And nearly two minutes played. Kitty's free. Moving away to the right of the goal. Well off target. So Galway still the leaders then by that point from Ian Orion. It's a good cut against the breeze by Ken Hogan. Off Ken Hogan, in around going in. Oh, Tipperary living so dangerously at the moment. Tony Keeney, marvellous catch. Here's Joe Cooney, couldn't quite control it. John Kennedy, Aiden Ryan up the field, but there's nobody up there. Silver is uh, not going out for Aiden Ryan at the moment. I think his hands go with Nicky English. Conor Hayes looking for the ball to come out to him. And the linesman signals that's going to be a ballway ball. Disputed by Nicky English. Certainly the Galway tactic at the moment is to play the ball, use the breeze, put it down into the full forward line, unsettle that tip full back line if at all possible. And so they slowing down the game. Not following Aiden Ryan at the moment, incidentally. Aiden's playing out around the half forward line. Tony O'Connor. Tony was fouled by Tony Keady. That's going to be a free in for Tipperary. And Nick English is their free taker. Tony Keady, who, like Peter Finnerty, has been a Galway regular now since the All Ireland semi final in 1985. Nicky English, the catalyst about whom this entire Tipperary team seems to tick. Should be the equaliser. It is. So sides level after six minutes play. That's taken by Conor O'Donovan. Happily, I'm sure for him, he feels back at fullback this afternoon. 
Jerry McInerney eager for the fray, nipping in smartly, but he overcarried. He was trying to release it outside to Michael Colvin of the referee there signalling, but he overtravelled. Jerry, who has spent uh, much of the last two years in the US, incidentally, Jerry today is playing in his eighth championship match, and remarkably, three of those have been All Ireland finals. This is where the ball may well end in there between the big two. John Kennedy coming from left half back to take the free. Low gets the breeze. And Fox getting there ahead of Holly Kilkenny. Awkward enough position. John Lahey trying to keep it in play. And the umpire steps in quickly and signals that it's gone off John Lahey and that will be a puck out. who produced a couple of truly outstanding saves in last year's final, ready for the puck out. Point to piece, in case you've joined us late in the 1988 All-Ireland Hurling Final. stand for Jerry McInerney, plenty of advice as well as to where he should place this ball. It comes off Declan Ryan. He's got a lot of composure for a player who's so young, just 20 years of age, 20 in July, Declan Ryan. Left-handed then, searching the inside, Cummins calls, misses, takes it again the second time, however. And old Sheehy under it, can't hold it. Comes out towards Paul Delaney. Here's Bobby Ryan hoping to impress in this match as he's impressed all year in the championship. And Declan Ryan is held by Jerry McInerney. Declan Ryan here who's completing his first full year in the senior team. And certainly his composure on the ball as we saw a little early on there certainly belies his youth. Paul Delaney. Long-range free-taker, teasingly in towards Nicky English, breaks down from Tony Keeley's stick, out towards Donny O'Connell, couldn't get it up on his stick, comes out to Pat Fox, and that's Peter Finity breaking it up, takes a heavy tumble, however, and fouled by the redhead there, Declan Ryan. He's a really great wing-back, Peter Finity. I know our viewers in the US this afternoon, in particular in New York, will be following his progress with great interest. Breeze carrying the ball way downfield. It certainly is a factor in the first half, and it's aiding Galway. Galway, the champions, bidding to hold on to their title. Michael Coleman releasing it outside to Joe Cooney, who put it back in quickly to Martin Nocton, and that's over the bar. This man is deadly in front of goal. The hero of the last day against Offaly starts in very positive form in the final. So Galway's lead is restored. Between Keady and O'Connell it comes, drops down towards Aiden Ryan, can't hold it. Buck Malone, such a hero last year, but he threw that ball, the referee decides. Correct decision, I think. Galway fans don't agree with the referee's verdict, but it seemed that way to me, I must say. This is a, a better position for Paul Delaney. It's a 65, effectively. In low again towards Pat Fox. Holly Kilkenny trying to get the measure of Fox now. Breaks out. Jody McInerney closing down Pat Fox's space. That's Holly Kilkenny, high. Now great little length, out of two brilliantly there, however. By Pat Malone, and a sideline ball for Tipperary. That's uh, Ollie Kilkenny, who did well, stayed out of that effectively, received the loose ball and played it well downfield. Bobby Ryan then coming up to take the sideline ball, his side trailing by a point but playing into the breeze. A 
course, it comes towards Joe Hayes, who hasn't seen much of the action so far. John Lahey closed out quickly by Peter Finnerty. It doesn't look like he's going to get too much change out of Finnerty. It's Pat Malone, out it comes to Martin Nocton, the match winner, surely. A low ball to Ian Ryan, the architect of many fine scores at the semi-final. Well released outside to Martin Nocton, who kept on motoring before Bobby Ryan could get back to put in a challenge. He's stuck it over the bar. Galway have a two-point lead and he scored two of the three points. His points coming from play in exciting fashion. And certainly this is the Galway attack that we saw in the semi-final. When they get the ball, when they get into open positions, they are so effective. Tipperary will have to counter in midfield because it's Galway in the ascendancy at the moment. Pat Malone too high with the delivery. It was a really good position, and there were players in near the square waiting for that ball. Colin Bonner stamping his authority in midfield at the moment. That's Declan Ryan up towards Pat Fox. Good pick up. Tricky forward. Peter Finnerty can't hold the stinging pass. Cindy Lenin releases to midfield. Picked up by Joe Hayes. Nice sidestep by Hayes. Settles himself. Nice composure. But a good save at the end by John Commons. Saw it all the way. To midfield towards Pat Malone. Left handed and left sided. Downfield towards Ian O'Ryan. Sun into his eyes. McGraw, marking is a little slack at times down there for Tipperary. Ian O'Ryan gets it onto his left hand side, but he can't steer it on target. It remains Galway three points, Tipperary one, and there are nearly 14 minutes gone in the first half. Can hold him with another mighty puck out against the breeze. Sheehy, taken however and well read by Jerry McInerney, locks it high into the sky, it'll drop down there invitingly for Ian O'Ryan and tapped away well by uh, John Hepperton indeed and it's gone for the game's first 65. The linesman had a look across at one another and the linesman on the right in fact was the one who saw Hepperton take it away from the grasp of Ian O'Ryan. a very tight marking player he's uh, wearing number four uh, wearing uh, number four yes and that's gone well over the bar Tony Keeley then with the 65 getting his first point of the match and Galway's fourth Chasing with Pat Malone. Right, on this side, John Denton says that's a Galway ball. John quite insistent. So here's the view as Jerry McInerney sees it. Ooh. Goes towards Michael McGrath, off McGrath's stick. He appeals, and it might have been another 65, but the referee is not impressed. McGrath played well for quite a while as a wing forward last year. He opened up the right hand side of that tip defense indeed. Ryan shot half blocked down, fair down injured John Lahey, and it's going to be a free in for Tipperary. Received a loose stroke of the hurley that time, I think, into the tummy. Taking it up on the feet and away he'll go. And the referee is insistent that. Uh, Mentors and trainers are removed from the field as quickly as possible, and so this gentleman is not allowed on. 
Nicky English ready to take the free. Side needing a point, and he supplies it. Both Tipperary's points have come from frees, and they both come from the stick of English. Travels down towards Linsky, trying to go around the defender. McGrath, Bobby Ryan. Fiercely competitive stuff. Ian Ryan. Game of real intensity, but uh, it hasn't opened up as much as most neutrals would like it to so far. And the referee says that's three against Galway. Foul by Brendan Linsky, marching into an opponent. That will take some of the pressure off the tip defence. Tip two points adrift at the moment, four points to two. Goal with the leaders. Jokuni has now moved back out to the 40, his chosen position, and as you saw there, Linsky in on the fringe of the square. Goes out to Nicky English from that loose ball. And pass forward to Donny O'Connell. Nice turn, getting inside. Point. It's four points to three. Tip's first point from play comes from Donny O'Connell, the kid of all man. Much criticised from time to time by sections of the fans for his contribution, but he's a very effective centre-forward. So just a point between the teams. And let's hope the nervous phase of the game is behind us. The match will now open out a bit as Pat Malone replies quickly for Galway. It travels over the bar for Malone's first score, and Galway have once again a two point advantage. In, and that goes off the, the legs, I think, of Molly Kilkenny and a temporary sideline ball. Bobby Ryan would love to point from this distance. One of the great wing backs in modern hurling, a former All Star, the referee having a little word with uh, Buck Malone and Declan Ryan, jostling for positions. Well chipped in towards Nicky English, but travels away from the face of the goal and wide. English very much the man that Tip will look to this afternoon. The 25-year-old captain will be 26 next month. So 20 minutes gone in the first half. Joe Hayes, one-handed away to his left, towards John Lahey. Space closed down quickly by Peter Finnerty, but this is an effective search forward by Lahey. Two players marking him. He tried to release it to Joe Hayes, who went the pass game in the first place. Hayes, upfield. Aiden Ryan adds to it, with Grant's hurling towards Nicky English. Turning, weaving, back to Aiden Ryan. Over the bar it sails. No, it's not. Now it's seen from here that it had gone over. It's gone wide. The temporary fans were cheering. So it remains. Galway, five points. Tip, three. Aiden Ryan has now gone back into a top of the right position. A top of the left, rather. Brendan Linsky, a thorn in the side of Conor O'Donnell at the moment. Back down. Alan Bonner is in there, so too John Kennedy. Kennedy with beautiful skill. Oh, this man might be back for a whole Island football final sometime. A very resourceful clearance then by John Kennedy. But a Galway sideline ball. Michael Coleman. No. 
pick up his knee from Joe Cooney. The back below, and he drills it over the bar. In characteristic fashion, Holway have opened up a three-point lead. A lone second point. Certainly the tip midfielders are going to have to close him down when he moves forward into those particular attacking positions because he's deadly. Jerry McInerney clearing. McGrath to fetch. Beaten on this occasion by John Heffernan. Towards Colin Bonner who wasn't expecting it. Tony Keady was the centre half back, full under pressure. Long ball down to in for in a run to run into a good shoulder by Paul Delaney. A very effective shoulder by Delaney at the crucial critical moment. Good clearance to midfield towards Declan Ryan. Scramble forward again for Galway and to Joe Cooney. A delightful player, Joe Cooney, when he really gets motoring. This is Jerry McInerney, looking busy as always. And last year's man of the match has given Galway a four-point lead. That's the kind of point that can certainly inspire a team. Galway playing with the advantage of the breeze, will remind you. Just over 12 minutes to go now to half-time. Tip will be hoping to stay as near as possible to Galway before half-time have that breeze at their backs for the second 35 minutes. Galway looking sharp, the experienced All-Ireland final team. And that's a tip ball. trying to break it down for Cooney but no she he was in there quickly whipped it to midfield towards John Lahey treading it back as far as Joe Hayes nice control good composure by Hayes Lahey forward into space nobody there expecting it it's Jerry McInerney who wins it well however he takes it down but goes to the ground and wins himself for free it's not easy for players like young Declan Ryan spoken to there by Jerry Kerwin to make an impression against one of the great half back lines in modern hurling it's interesting indeed that taking a look at the half back line and midfield of Galway, between them they've contributed four points so far. One of those was from a 65 by Keating. McGrath trying to keep it in play, but even he can't do that. Well, the Tipperary followers, tense, expectant, hoping, of course, as well that this will be their day. his way, it certainly is impressive, chopped down on that occasion and winning himself the three. Connor Hayes has come out from his full back line, there's nobody marking Nicky English if this ball travels back quickly. Connor fancies his chances from his own 65 metre line, oh that's well on its way, it sails high, it's got over the bar for Galway's eighth point. They can all do it, the full forward line, the half forwards, midfield, half back and the full back line. He was very heavily criticised, of course, for his performance in the last match, indeed in this year's campaign, so Conor Hayes has a point to prove. And the Galway crowd now surging behind their team, singing their praises and realising that with that win behind them, to try and kill off this Tipperary challenge and realising that they might well be a two in a row it was a high challenge into the face there of Jerry McInerney who getting a little bit out of control and the referee moving in there and having a word with Colin Bonner quite clearly it's going to be a free to go away I don't think there was a name taken just a warning issue Joe Cooney is the free taker off target. That's Galway's fifth wide. Temporary 
Burnley themselves having just four. Johnny Keeney was in there smartly but left the ball behind to get from Ryan up towards Pat Fox being held there by Oli Kilkenny. Referee whistles and signals that it's going to be a free enter to Verary as they play away but uh, the referee's whistle did sound. There's so much noise in Croke Park it can be very hard to hear the official from time to time. Five points the margin at the moment and Nicky English will want to drill this one over the bar. He's got two points already. Oh, it came off the post and comes down, and it's gone wide. Fox claims he was being held, as he seemed to be, when that ball came down off the post. Fox goes in there to protest, to draw the foul, or the alleged foul, to the attention of the umpire, but nothing comes of it. It's eight points to three. Matt Malone running unchallenged, striking. And that one tails to the left. You have to be content with the two points he's scored so far. Oh, we're winning a lot of possession from their strong half-back line and their powerful midfield. With affinity. Affinity once again. Through just far enough as far as Pat Malone, who was fouled, didn't try to unhinge him, fouling him in any case with six and a half minutes to go to the half time whistle. And for disputing that, Tim penalised 10 metres. So a more favourable position then for Tony Keady. It's a flawless finish. He is delighted. Nine to three. Pat Malone is now being marked by Aidan Ryan, trying to close down his dominance at midfield. And there are several switches at the moment, I notice, in the Tipperary team, not playing as well as they can at all. But that really is a tribute to the effectiveness of Galway so far. Johnny O'Connell trying to burst forward. Free in. John Lahey seems to have moved in towards midfield and Colin Bonner out towards the left half forward position. In fact, he's now gone forward again, I see, into the full forward line where he's been marked by Sylvie Lenane. Nicky English is free and this time the post doesn't come against him. He strokes over his third point from a free, keeping Tipperary in touch. Well, five points in a hurling game, it's not such a big lead, of course. But Galway certainly have been the team of the first half. No Sheehy, and passes it forward towards Aidan Ryan. John Lahey, instead of Minor, up to Pat Fox, good catch. Going on his own, by the wind takes it, the sting out of it. And it doesn't even go over the end line, it's John Collins who clears downfield towards Ian Ryan. Joe Hayes appeals over there from uh, Pat Fox. It's going to be a tip ball in any case. Tipperary certainly restructuring their team, as we say. Aidan Ryan now in midfield, marking Pat Malone. Colin Bonner, who hasn't had a good game so far, he's up top of the left. John Lahey has moved across, and he's also in a midfield position. John Kennedy, not hitting it too well. Peter Finity. Michael Coleman. Across the face of the goal, dangerously so, with Pat Fox around, trying to turn inside Ali Kilkenny. Certainly the supply of the ball up towards Nicky English and Pat Fox. No all that great so far, but it produces a break on this occasion from Declan Ryan. Declan Ryan's first point of the match, and now there's just four between them. 
So, despite the fact that they haven't been playing all that terribly well, Tip very much in touch in this final of 1988. No shea he did well, but that's going to be a Galway ball. Tip will be hoping to hold their composure as much as possible to the half-time whistle. Galway then hoping to impose their will a little bit more. McInerney towards Brendan Linsky. And it's over the bar. They've been so dominant in the way it's surprising that they're only five points ahead at the moment. I would have thought that they should have maybe been a little bit further, further ahead. Breaks it down, came off the line right up to Nicky English. Looked at the post and he pushes it over the bar. His fourth point, the first to come from play, their inspirational leader. Sheehy going out of that one but leaving it behind it breaks out towards Pat Malone who wasn't expecting it to come Declan Ryan waited belted it forward to Colin Bonner who'll be hoping to make an impression at the top of the left on Sylvie Lenane towards Pat Fox the other corner forward at the moment Ali Kilkenny staying close, staying tight but conceding the free So Nicky English will once again come across and Galway now in defence are committing the type of errors like that foul there by Kilkenny on Fox that will bring Tipperary even closer. Taking great care. Oh, it was wide of the target, away to the left-hand side. And so it remains ten points to six. A minute to go before half time. John Kennedy taking that well. Great poise. Half blocked down, however. Oh, there was a shoulder there just off the ball, which I saw. And it seemed to be by Michael Coleman on John Kennedy. Kennedy is down injured and the referee is coming across having a word with Michael Coleman. That was an off-the-ball incident. It was a shoulder. Which has uh, put John Kennedy out of the game just for the moment. He's in need of attention, attention which is getting over on the far sideline. John Kennedy happily back in the match. Nicky English has now drifted out into the half-forward line. Donny O'Connell has gone full forward late in this first half. Michael McGrath. It's blocked down well, however, by John Hefferman. Out by John Kennedy. Jerry McInerney nipping in. The meat in the sandwich on this occasion. He waited expecting a free. Nothing came over. Out to Michael Coleman it comes. A timely shoulder. Makes him off his stride, he carries the ball out over the sideline and Theo English there in the background was giving great encouragement to the young Tipperary stars. Declan Ryan, one of the stars, of course, that so much is expected from. John Kennedy, one of the Dublin-based players who make the long journey down to Thurlis a couple of times a week. And indeed, when it's the build-up to the championship, you're travelling down practically the whole time. The referee calls for the ball at the end of the first half in which Galway, the champions, were very much the dominant force. But they go in, leading by only four points. They had the ball away by Jerry McInerney. Into the breeze, however, Michael McGrath now out on the right half forward position. Probingly forward towards Ian O'Ryan. This is uh, Paul Delaney. Bobby Ryan holding off his man. 
clearance down, well taken by Donny O'Connell, thought about a pass to Joe Hayes, flicks it forward instead, which is taken with difficulty by Silva Lenane, out as far as Declan Ryan, turns inside two men, well done by Declan Ryan, outside the 45 metre line, and there's the opening point of the second half, there's just three between them. Ryan's second point, two invaluable scores for the followers and for the team of the blue and gold. Tip fans are certainly happy. The team keeping in touch throughout the first half and the referee going down now to have a little word with one of the umpires, the umpire at the other side, there he is. Two of Jerry Kerwin's brothers indeed are umpires in today's match and uh, let's see the result of that. A little word with Sylvie and Aidan Ryan about future behaviour. So the message is fairly plain. Ten points to seven. Galway the leaders. John Commons with the puck out. Added to there by Michael McGrath into the space. John Heffernan goes back. Good performance in the first half by the temporary backs. Likewise for Galway. Joe Cooney, who didn't have a good first half, didn't see too much of the action. Tony again. And no outcome. When you think about it and look through this Galway attack, Tony has yet to score, Cunningham yet to score, McGrath yet to score, and for Tipperary, Pat Fox has yet to score. Aiden Ryan going out to try and meet that one. Connor Hayes. Sylvia Lene. Tony Keady trying to tidy up that situation. Stillman. The kind of stylish hurley that we witnessed in the last year's epic game. It's drilled down, but taken with ease here by Sylvia Lene. Experienced campaigner. Persisting. McGrath gets it. And tidies it up with that flick over the bar. Michael McGrath's first point restores Galway's into the lead of four points. Linsky is playing at full forward. Cooney at centre forward at the moment. As they were programmed. Breaks down to Declan Ryan off the stick of Silver Lenane, tries to carry it across that channel, broken up by Peter Finity. John Lunny closing down on Peter Finity at every occasion. Finity then, a little altercation there with uh, Donny O'Connell, and Tony Keady steps in as well. Originally it was Finity versus O'Connell. And the referee penalises the Tipperary attack and team another 10 metres. He scored two very nice points in the first half from long-range frees, Tony Keady, but this is into the breeze. John Kennedy drops it down, but gets back to recover his error to Colin Bonner. High to the middle, towards Pat Fox. Mickey English over there with Connor Hayes. Looking for support, gets it from Declan Ryan. Getting it on his left-hand side, and that's a good point. He's now got three points. 20-year-old newcomer in the tip colours this year makes it 11 points to 8. So we await the first goal of the All-Ireland Final. Will there be a goal in this year's clash? It took the introduction of no lane last week to produce the first and only goal. What wonders about this year? Ali Kilkenny out towards Jerry McInerney's wing. Jerry, who recovered from flu, which afflicted him during the week, to play in today's contest. A 
Shot up towards Pat Malone. Here's Michael Coleman, Malone's partner at midfield. Well, that's a hint of space, but there's nobody there waiting for it except John Heffernan. And the second time he doubles on it and out over the sideline. It's a very defiant Tipperary defence. Affinity, slowing down the game, taking his time, and the fans, I think, want the introduction of no lane for Galway. But uh, yes, he is warming up on the far side. Linsky forward towards Joe Cooney, tight position across towards Cunningham. Nocton, oh, it's gone wide. It was an awkward pass back into the face of that goal, and Nocton was the one who took responsibility but couldn't steer it on target. Now, who will be going? following the introduction very shortly of no lane. The bandaged thigh, which caused the damage and resulted in him failing to make the team in the first place. Donny O'Connell. Off the stick of Sylvie Lenaric, ricochets and Peter Finnerty. Knocks it wide, but only as far as the waiting Aidan Ryan. From an awkward position, that's a point. Reminiscent of some great points, particularly scored in the league final from positions out around that side of the, side of the field. And this time it's Aidan Ryan who gets his first score. And so no lane is the one who goes on, or will be going on just as soon as the referee is notified. We're waiting to see still just who's going to go. Will they make a change of midfield, I wonder? It won't be Pat Malone in that case. He had a blinder in the first half. No Sheehy. Lane is still waiting to come on. No Sheehy again. Tony Keeney, the other centre-half back. Drills it in. And Ken Hogan waits for it to go harmlessly out over the end line. So now it's no Lane's turn to come on. Give that little slip of paper to the referee, Jerry Kerwin. Cyril Farrell is going in. And uh, and Orion is coming out, and it's Anthony Cunningham who's been called ashore. Cunningham was gone, didn't have a particularly happy afternoon, failed to score, and so he goes, and no lane comes in and goes into the full forward line at top of the left. Always still leading, remember, but only by two points now, 11 to 9. This is Martin Nocton. The champions bidding to retain their title. John Kennedy took his eye off that one. Space closed down quickly by Michael McGrath. John Kennedy and Noel Sheehy there. Out into the centre towards Declan Ryan. And the referee calls for the ball. And there was an off-the-ball incident there. The referee says it's going to be a free for where the ball lands. A free which will be for Tipperary. And a foul down that end of the field, as you see, Brendan Linsky is the player who's picking himself off the ground. Michael Keating walking around the place, Babs Keating, as he's known, of course, to legions of hurling followers. Tio and Doni there as well. Between them, they have 13 All-Ireland medals. Paul Delaney waits. This is from 65 metres. And there's just a point between the teams. The man from Ross Cray gets his opening score at a vital and critical time. And the Tipperary fans now, I think, believe they can win this final. But only nine minutes gone in the second half. It's a long way to go yet. Tight and tense. Exciting as well. Michael Coleman puts up the hand. It's Pat Malone, whoever gets it forward. And it's intercepted by Colin Bonner. Tipperary tails up at the moment. This is a good run, but he's stopped by Pat Malone. Out towards no lane. First chance to impress. Be marked over there by the tight marking Paul Delaney. Lane across field towards Michael Coleman, a brother of Matty who played football for Galway in the 83 final. And pass forward to McGrath. Point between the teams at the moment. And Galway have a two point advantage again. Michael McGrath, the scorer, he's got two points and it's 12 to 10. But it really is a tribute to the tight marking of both defences that we have yet to have a goal. 45 minutes of action. Jerry McInerney can't hold, it breaks down to Donny O'Connor, he can't take it either. Tony Keady here. 
Turning on his right hand side. Towards Brendan Linsky, trying to break it down to the other forwards, but it's taken by Noel Sheehy, former fullback. And Sheehy was fouled that time by Brendan Linsky, and the referee goes back to take Linsky's name. So Linsky becomes the second player to have his name taken in this year's hurling final. Noel Sheehy was the player who was injured in that tussle. Sheehy, who played last as a centre-half back for Tipperary in the quarter-final of the league against Antrim. So, Paul Delaney takes the spree. It's two points between the teams. But that's wide. Inches wide of the right-hand post. It was an ambitious enough effort. Plenty of time remaining in the contest for either side to stamp their authority, if that's possible. Alan Bono trying to break it down. Joe Clooney picking up, coming a little bit more into the match in the second half. And towards Ian O'Ryan. A dangerous forward, but not on this occasion. Four wide at each end, and Galway now with ten wides, Tipperary with seven. before as John Lahey ran in, got the break, in it went, but no goal. So Nicholas English, I'm sure, will tap this one over and put the minimum between the teams again, taking extreme care. As always, he's now got five points. Four of the five, incidentally, coming from freeze. So it's beautifully balanced again. So much tension, though, about Grove Park, you can almost touch it. Tipped in the wilderness for so long, of course, back for the first time in 17 seasons. A young, inexperienced team by and large. And Galway have been here many times before. Pierce Pickett there in the background, one of the substitutes with the clenched fist saying to the lads, come on, it can be done. Well, that's what both teams know. McInerney. Towards Noel Lane, who seems to have gone in towards a full forward position. Michael Coleman trying to advance. Still Michael Coleman. Lost his stick. Joe Hayes. Stalemate. It breaks to Lane. Dangerous in positions like this. But off target. It was pursued along the line there by John Kennedy, who realised the peril that Tip were in when this man got possession. And so the tactic was to close his space down quickly. No lane of player who likes to get the ball into his hand and then try and round the defender. And this very pleasant afternoon in Crowe Park, Ali Kilkenny whips it forward to midfield. Where Litsky is now very much involved in the business. That's Martin Nocton opening up the broad shoulders, but really casting aside a good chance because it was neither a shot at goal nor was it a good pass. Tony Keady, he's tidied so well at centre half. John Heffernan puts it down, but only into the waiting arms of Brendan Linsky, spraying it outside to lay. Conor O'Donovan, the Limerick man who played minor with Limerick, is fouled, and that's going to be a free for Tipperary.
Bordellini's free then down towards Declan Ryan. Searching the end. Hammonds came well on that occasion. It was positive and decisive. Finity completes it. Out to Keeney, an adventurous centre forward at the back, I should say. Joe Hayes whipping into it. And the referee says he didn't like the nature of that pull. He regarded it as a dangerous foul. And the free to go away. Even the anxiety and tension of the occasion is mirrored, I think, on the expressions of these supporters. The match is so delicately balanced. There's so much at stake for both teams. They've been built up for this final. The marking is tight. There's little fluency and little room for expression. KD in towards Noel Lane. Then it well on to the head of Conor O'Donovan. And Lane then explaining what he was doing. He did that at the start of the Offaly match as well, trying to sort out the fullback early on. Ozzy Bennett there. The eighth time he's been involved with a Tipperary team in an All-Ireland final. See that again from that long ball towards Noel Lane. As the ball was in the air, he hit onto it, but the referee said it was dangerously onto the head of Conor O'Donovan. Down went the fullback. Well, Noel Lane is a very fair, very tough full forward. And the exchanges are always tough against a tight marking fullback like Conor O'Donovan. And thankfully, the fullback, none the worse for that. Aiden Ryan gets the break of the ball. Can't get a decent shot at goal, however. Michael Coleman who gets back there, the midfield player, bring it out. Paul Delaney here. That's a very long shot from Delaney, but nobody was expecting it. A lot of good possession has been thrown away by passes like that one. In the centre of the field, Tip not exactly totally pleased, I'm sure, with the way things are developing. Bonner going up to meet this one with Pat Malone, who hasn't been as convincing as he was in the first half, but that's attributed to Ferrari in a way. McGrath here through the eye of an eagle. Looking for players to give it to. Lane always available. There's a lot of good running. Little pass inside to Joe Cooney, marked by Bobby Ryan and John Kennedy. The shot by Cooney is over the bar. He gets his first point of the match. 18 and a half minutes into the second half. A pass that was, or a point that was well set up following a good pass from No Lane. So two points between them again. And Joe Hayes is being called off by perhaps Keating here. Seems like Paul McBonner is in and full forward. A sympathetic round of applause for Hayes. Aiden Ryan has gone to midfield, that's Tony O'Connell at centre forward, and it's wide. And yes, we can confirm it's Cormac Bonner who's come in, he's playing full forward. Nicky English is playing top of the left. That's a vital switch then that they've made. There's the man who scored the all-important goal of the Munster five. remember that in July? Trying to get it forward. Once again, the Mike manager of the Tipperary team keeping on his toes. Anxious moments for him as he goes behind John Common's goal. John Heffern, and meanwhile, towards Aidan Ryan, now at midfield, we remind you. John Lahey. Nicky English taking it well, passing outside to Aidan Ryan. Striking that forward with a lot of conviction, however, it was half blocked in any case. Coming back down to Tony Keaton. Pass outside to Michael Coleman. Ball went grouping well. Using their experience when needed. No lane here with Conor O'Donovan. Once again, he'll try to engineer a score or a free, maybe. It's a score he's looking for. Once again, it's Joe Cooney. Joe Cooney has really sparkled since Lane has come on. Linsky. 
backing one another up well, but there's still a gap outside. But that's one pass too many. And it's John Kennedy who breaks it up. And that's the result of the boot to pick it away clear down towards Callum Bonner. Jerry McInerney gets a stick to it, but the referee saw a foul there on Callum Bonner. And it's going to be a free for Tipperary from about 45 metres out from their own end line. Callum Bonner has had an adventurous afternoon. At one stage, he was top of the left. Such a good first half at all, but he's coming into it in the second. It's again Paul Delaney. Down towards Paul McBonner. Donny O'Connell there too. A shot from Colin Saves. A great shot by Fox was saved by John Cummins. It comes out to Jerry McInerney. And Galway now live dangerously. Brendan Linsky tries to break it down. Towards Pat Malone, he's quickly blocked down, however, by two tip players. It's released to Declan Ryan. This is a marvellous performance by Ryan. A win loser draw, this fellow has been a hero. Four points he's contributed of tips, 12 so far. And there's just a point between them. And the manager is on the field, something which he's really not supposed to do, but uh, it's just to make a switch. Nicky English has been told to drift further upfield, and Sylvie Linane has followed. Aidan Ryan, meanwhile, is in need of attention. And Jerry Kerwin has uh, stopped the game while that can happen. Oh, we're thinking of another substitution. It's just Tony Kilkenny is the one, I think, who's going to be brought in. Tony Keeney catches well. Pushing forward, a player who loves to attack the centre half back, remember. To Pat Malone, and it's over the bar. Pat Malone's third point. A player who took a lot of stick in Galway from many fans and supporters for his performance in the semi final. But he's answered his critics. Kilkenny comes on. Tony Kilkenny, who played in the finals of 85 and 86. On he comes. We'll wait to see just who is going to go. Tony Kilkenny can play in midfield or in half-back. And I think it's Martin Nocton, the hero of the last game. The semi-final is going, yes, he's been called ashore. So Tony Kilkenny and No Lane have come into the Galway team during the second half. Two points between the teams. It's 14 for Galway, 12 for Tipperary. And just over 11 and a half minutes remaining. Will Tip retain their... Will Galway, I should say, retain their title? Will Tip win their first All-Ireland at the 23rd and all for the first time in 17 years? John Heffernan. Here's Fox. Neat turn. Nobody expecting to set Tony Keady. The game he's playing at centre-back. Tripped by Declan Ryan. React. First half, I think. Ten minutes to go. No goals so far. Brendan Linsky, the most experienced, the most senior player on the field. And that is going to be Heinzmann's ball. John Denton will throw it in between Linsky and Noel Sheehy, his marker. But Jerry Kerwin wants them back a little bit further than that. Back you go, lads, he says. Kennedy here. Well blocked down by Ian Ryan. McGrath. Towards no lane. Oh, it just didn't make it. Nearly did so. The breeze was holding it a little bit. It's a tip ball in any case.
Tony O'Connor from that sideline ball. It runs on indeed to Pat Fox, 45 metres out. Trying to bring Tip back into the game a little nearer. McGrath here. right throughout the contest leading at half time by four points but just two points ahead at the moment and this is Aaron Ryan in a fine solo run now can he deliver the pass to Linsky there's a loose man outside him alone is waiting gathering outside the 45 meter line in it goes towards Joe Cooney goes down by Aiden Ryan still gets in his shot but it's off the target Joe Cooney wanting a change of early Affinity trying to break that one down with John Lahey there too. Lahey. It's Affinity again. A dashing wing back up towards goal lane in a one-to-one -one situation. Dangerous. Ben Hogan reads well. Makes a good clearance. Back in early with a fabulous catch. Playing another great game this afternoon for Galway. Shouldering Bobby Ryan. for sure, but that's the position. Two sides who so badly want to win the final. Kennedy. Always ball. Peter Finity almost collides with John Denton, the linesman, that time in his anxiety to get it. A goal between the teams, a goal which we haven't had in the final to date. Joe Cooney trying to latch onto that one. Away by Bobby Ryan. Here's Tony Kilkenny, left sided in towards no lane. And it goes away from goal. But it'll waste a few precious moments. Galway hold possession. Tip will now have to get this ball downfield. They need scores quickly. 
broken up by Oliver Kenny. Jersey pulled by Declan Ryan, referee has an advantage. But Fox. Ryan out of the end by Johnny O'Connell. TD tries to close down. Here's O'Connell going through. The shot. There's just a point, or rather, there's just two points between them. Johnny O'Connell's second point of the match comes with just over four minutes to go. 15 to 30. They converge in midfield. Little fluency, but it's Noel Sheehy who tries to emerge with that ball. Michael Coleman having difficulty getting up with a stick. It's Pat Fox here, blocked down by Jerry McInerney. Ball has barely travelled 10 metres either direction in the last second or two. Conor O'Donovan gets there first. Aidan Ryan likewise for Tipperary. They battle to get it out of defence. Back by Aidan Ryan to Noel Lane, who uses the experience well, tries to slow down the game when needs be. Hold the ball up over there, take two players with him, but on this occasion he stepped out over the sideline and it's going to be a Tipperary line ball. No way, says no name. There's also been a question about the pass, indeed, whether it was a legal hand pass or whatever. Paul Delaney. Colin Bonner tries to break it down. It's Tony Kilkenny through the centre. Goldwyn now will just be anxious to keep the ball up that end of the field. It's such a close game. At this stage, normally in the All-Ireland final, the winning team, well, their supporters will be on the sideline ready to come in, but nobody knows who's got to win this one. Declan Ryan, two points between them. Loses the hurley, tries to get it outside to English, who was waiting. Fox here, trying to pick up, closed down quickly by Joe Cooney. He's been a very industrious and busy Joe Cooney in the second half. Kennedy. Comes down to John Hefferman, to John Lackey. There's his shot well on its way towards Nicholas English and wide. A fine pass inside from Lackey, shaking the head thinking they might indeed have got a free inside that time. Certainly, I think that uh, Nicky English would have felt he might have had a free for a bit of holding. Any frees, of course, inside of the square at this stage of the match, or any stage of the match could result in penalties. There's just under two minutes to go. Galway hoping to hang on. Jerry Burke's in the match, as you saw there for Galway. Here he is again, Jerry Burke. It's wide. A substitute late in the second half, Jerry Burke having come in. We didn't see who went off. Galway now battling their hearts out, but both teams, full credit to them for giving us a very, very good game of hurling. Compelling contest, not over yet! John Cummins on his knees, literally, and it's a 65 with Lahey raiding. Paul McBonner was the one, I think, rather than Lahey. Yes, it's Paul McBonner, number 20, who was going in. Once again, trying to prove himself as a predator. 40 seconds remaining. Two points between the teams, and Tip will surely now go to try and score a goal here. Noel Sheehy advising Paul Delaney about their predicament with 25 seconds to go now. This ball will have to drop in and Tip will have to score a goal in order to win this final. The Galway fans cheer loudest. We're almost in to injury time. There'll be a little bit of that. The trainer was on a few times in the second half. Commons. Towards no lane it comes. Battling with Conor O'Donovan. Lane! A goal! No lane! He's the ace predator, surely. Lane, the goal scoring hero last year. Had a great semi final, I thought. And he scored a vital goal at a vital time in this year's final. This is it again. That long ball up to Noel Lane, catching Conor Donovan off balance. Doggedly 
pursuing that ball and slotting it wide of Ken Hogan for the game's only goal. So, Tipperary, is there any response with time now well and truly into injury time? A minute of injury time played. The referee calls. No, it's a free. Free, free out for Galway. And look at that, a nice moment there between Nicholas English and Ollie Kilkenny. And now, as you see, with spots of rain falling down from the skies, but... That doesn't matter the Galway men or the Galway followers. It looks like being their day. Tip have certainly battled bravely. Made it a very, very compelling final. Two very committed teams. The two best hurling sides in the country, I think it must be said. Jerry Kerwin warning Connor Hayes. The crowd, the Tipperary followers, I'm sure, drifting away. The referee, meanwhile, has gone in and told the Galway fellas, get on with it. The game is continuing, I think, with the puck out. So the Galway fans ready to come in and salute the many heroes who are making history. They're ready to invade. But they've been kept on their toes throughout the match by a game Tipperary team. Fox. Great game he's played for Galway. That's Paul Delaney. Chipping it in towards Cormac Bonner. Tip looking for a goal. It's a penalty, I think, or is it? He was certainly... It is, yes, it's a penalty for Tipperary. It might not be over yet. It depends on how much time the referee's going to add on. There's five points separating the sides at the moment. We're three minutes into injury time. Tip with this penalty. English will be the taker. They're all ready to uh, line up the goal line. The referee signalled it was all out. Yes, that's the position. I think he's waiting for the defenders to get out of the goal line. And they're being told now just three on the goal line. So Nicholas English, the team captain. He belts it over the bar for Tipperary's 14th point, a consolation score. He's got six of those points, and there it is. Galway complete a fabulous two in a row by retaining their title, and Tip, a very game Tip side, must wait a little longer as the champions win their fourth All-Ireland title with the final scoreline, which was Galway, one goal and 15 points. Tipperary, 14 points, a victory that Galway have strived so hard to achieve. And certainly this is a setting that Peter Finnerty has come to know, defiantly punching the air. A Croke Park scene that Galway have certainly become used to in the last few years and begun to dominate. Today they were playing in their fourth successive final and it really was a fine performance by so many of the Galway stars, like Jerry McInerney, their defence, I thought, was magnificent. They battled bravely in midfield. Some of their forwards had something of an off day, but that, in a way, was a tribute to the tight-marking Tipperary defence. This was also the eighth final appearance since the most recent breakthrough by Galway in 1975, and who can forget that breakthrough? At the time, it was thought it might be just a passing phase but this team under Cyril Farrell have shown that is not the case and so they've won three wins in the last eight finals and surely now you know that Tony Keeney and his colleagues will get it together again after all the celebrations they'll seek a three in a row I'm sure in 1989 there's confirmation of the score then four points separating the sides of the finish Galway 115 Tipperary, 14 points. No Lane, who came on and who did so well, who contributed handsomely, set up some fine scores and got that great goal for Galway, which was so badly needed right at the finish to absolutely settle it. Because can you imagine, had he not got that goal, 
and had Nicky English then been presented with the penalty right at the end with just two points between them, my goodness me, what drama we would have had. But it was not to be, and Cyril Farrell, who masterminded the triumph, who's been quoted as saying that he wants to step down after this match, I'm sure now that pressure is going to be applied over the winter to get him to change his mind and they'll be trying to make sure that he remains at the helm for at least another year. So the legions of Tipperary fans watch now as Galway enjoy their moment of glory. And to their credit, the Tipperary fans, I can tell you, have remained up on Hill 16 to witness the presentation. Conor Hayes goes up, it's become a familiar sight for Conor. Criticised going into this match, but he played a masterly game on Nicky English. He's always most successful captain ever. They've won the two in a row, but up on Hill 16, while some are drifting away, let's be honest, the vast majority of Tipperary fans are staying on. It's a moment they want to savour as well. Their team back in the big time. And I don't think it'll be too long before Tipperary are up receiving this cup. But the day well and truly belonging to the maroon and white of Galway, after so many frustrating years leading up to the 70s, they certainly have come good lately. And the cards are there. Maroon Rock, come and move past Gale. The wall of the guard is the wall. The friend of God of you. Come on, dear. Let's not have a heart. Oh, here we are. And there's a lot of them. There are plenty of laughs for food and a beer again. Congratulations to God. It's indeed an historic occasion here to have a Galway man to come up here to take the McCarthy Cup for two years running. I would like to thank our own hurling board and all those 
that helped us during the year, our county board as well, and especially our three selectors, Phelan, Bernie and Cyril Farrell. I would like to thank our supporters, not only those here today, those that couldn't get tickets and are at home watching on the television. And the people outside the country, in London, in Europe, Australia, and in New York, Boston, Frisco, and elsewhere, and especially to the boys in Chicago. We did it again, we'll see you next January. Just a word to gallant losers to Pereri. They, they made us fight all the way for it. They're a fine team, and there, there is no doubt that their day will come. Uh, it's not far off when a temporary man will be up here to accept the McCarthy Cup. I would now ask our supporters to give him three rousing cheers. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Come on, Augie. And there on the pitch. As the Galway supporters celebrated, as Conor Hayes said, a historic occasion for Galway Hurling taking the Liam McCarthy Cup for the second year running. A sense of relief too, I think, up here in the presentation box. And Joe Connolly, you will vouch for that. Well, it's marvellous altogether, Mike, because uh, a lot of things were called into question about Galway coming into this All-Ireland. And a lot of people were saying that Tipperary had a right to win today's match and a lot of past stars of that county said the same words. Well... You're getting emotional about it, Joe. Yeah, but like, you know... <laughs> you know, it, it, it concretes the 1980s for Galway, and, you know, the things that started off years ago, you know, people said this day would never come, but it's, it's just too much all to do. <laughs> well, Joe, listen, we'll give you a moment to regain your thoughts again, and we'll go to Johnny Clifford. Johnny, it was a tense, atmosphere-filled uh, last couple of minutes, the last ten minutes. You could cut the atmosphere with the knife, you could put it in a bottle and bring it home with you. Well, you could, Michael, and first thing first, Galway totally deserved to win. And it would have been totally unfair if Tip had snatched the win. Now, these things happen. I thought at half, I said before the match Galway would win, I thought Tip at halftime had a good chance. But the second half took the same pattern as the first. Tipperary never looked like scoring a goal. Galway took the game to them and certainly totally deserved to win. Over the last few minutes of the game, I, I suppose it, it, it kind of lost its pattern, if you like, because both teams became desperate. Tip desperate to get that goal that would have put them into the lead because Galway only led by two points for much of it. And Galway just seemed to be hanging on in there until No Lane scored that great goal. Well, what happened with Galway? They brought their men back. And so every ball that was clear, there was a loose tip man to pick it up and hit it in. But as I said, Michael, tip realistically never looked like scoring a goal. If they were to get one, it was going to be a lucky break or maybe a penalty earlier or something. But no, they never looked like getting the goal and Galway certainly deserved to win. Joe Connolly, have you recovered yourself? Sorry about that. That's no problem at all, Joe. Let's talk about two men, because we talked about them before the match, Joe Cooney and Nicholas English, who were expected to dominate this game so much. Yeah. And really they didn't, because I suppose it wasn't that kind of a game. Well, in, a person needs to be an extreme brilliant hurler to play a very, to play a very good final when he's expected to, because Nicholas now and Joe, like in the, in the league matches and that, and uh, when, when their skills are honed as well as they are, Fellas that aren't fit and that can really look very slipshod beside them. But on a day like today where everybody is at the fittest level of the year, like what they're superbly motivated and it's dog eat dog and it's the dog of determination because it's it's your county you're presenting out there. It's very difficult for them. Now Joe had a quiet enough game today but still did some lovely tidy work. But Nicholas, in fairness to him, he was on a hiding to nothing today because the media made him out to be, and he is a great hurler, but there was too much made of him, and he had the added responsibility of being captain, and the added responsibility of just taking the freeze, and the response, and all this in his first All Ireland final. You know, and I have no doubt that he will, and he'll play great All Irelands. But I, I actually had that something today because I had heard during the week that Conor Hayes, well, Dr. Con Murphy, the cartoon doctor, told me that he was so perfectly healthy after his back injury. 
and I knew that he was quietly awful determined to, to show him, and he was the man of the match for Galway today. Conor Hayes, I think, uh, answered all the sceptics about, about his performances in the past, as he has done in the past at Ireland Finals. And I thought, and as well as that, John Commons, I think, had a, made two marvellous saves. But you could see from up here, looking down at the Galway backline, that they would die, literally, to, rather than let a temporary forward score a goal. And that, that is what won it for Galway, pure determination. And Johnny Clifford, one aspect of the game, Tipperary could never have going into this game against Galway, and that was the experience, because Galway had been there before as losers and as winners. And that was obvious, I think, in some of the tip players, and many of the tip players out there today. Well, true, Michael, but there are teams who have come to talk Park first time and won. But I think that would be taking away from Galway's victory to bring anything else into it. They were certainly outstanding in the second half, way over Tipperary, and it just on the day, Michael, they were a far superior team at the end of the day. Well, Johnny, there's a great atmosphere, of course, going on behind us. We're hearing the fields of Atten Rai being played down there and a great din of noise. The Galway supporters don't want to go home at all. They're still down in their pitch. They're waving their flags and they're paying tribute to the team who, at this stage, I'm sure, are trying to make their way, desperately probably, back to the dressing room. But Joe Connolly, one man who must be particularly pleased today is Noel Lane. He was sent in there to get a goal and he got a very important one. His last four championship matches for Galway, last year's semi-final and final, and this year's semi-final and final, he scored very vital goals. And again, there maybe might have been a bit of cloud about his non-participation before the game because people were saying this and that and the other. But uh, as well as Nolan being vindicated, I think Cyril Farrell was vindicated by doing what he did. And there's talks of him wanting not to play again, but... Uh, or not to, to, to give up the goal. Between, well, I'd say he might change his mind after this, Joe. Joe, that's where we have to leave it then uh, on this All-Ireland final day. Now, let me leave you with a reminder that the Sunday game tonight on RTE2 television is at 10.40. Don't forget our special live phone-in. The telephone number there is 016160000 if you want to put your calls through and your thoughts on today's game. 616000 is that number, 01 if you're outside the area. It's been a great day for Galway Hurling, their second All-Ireland final in a row. Will they do what the footballers did and make it three in a row? Well, that remains to be seen. But from all of us at Club Park here today, bye-bye to you. Scattered in a little under an hour and a half at Croke Park this afternoon. Well, needless to say, two people had very little to smile about after the match. Michael, do you need to look at the video to give a post-mortem? Are you prepared right now? I'm prepared right now, Jimmy. Um, the worst fears, my worst fears all the week came to pass out in that field today, and uh, I need no video to tell me the mistakes that were made. It might have cost us the match, but... Uh, I'm not taking anything away from Galway. They hurled, they hurled a typical Croke Park hurling out there. Came to meet the ball, did the right thing with at the right time. Aggressive enough to win all Ireland. Uh, they'll have back some particular Tony Keady. Showed us what, what, what's required to win in all Ireland. You said your worst fears of the whole week. Do you want to develop that point? Well, um, the lads know. And I don't, want to, I don't want to be too hard on the lads because they give us an awful lot. But there's an awful lot required to win in all Ireland, Jimmy. Uh, there's an awful, an awful lot of effort required. A lot of, lot, of, lot of guys have to improve their skills an awful lot if they want to come out of that, that all in the middle, which is so, so badly required in Tipperary. So um, I, want, I, I don't want to be, you know, pointing the finger at anybody, but uh, it is a long haul. To, if you're going to be an all Ireland holder, it is a seven-day-a-week job. Well, the goal that really wrapped it all up was Noel Lenz. He's done it again to you, Ken. Yeah, uh, Noel is a great poacher, you know, and uh, obviously he's a great boost to Galway when he comes on, you know, <laughs> because uh, sooner or later he's going to stick one in the net, and even in the last few minutes he, he waited for his chance and he got it, and he stuck it away well and fair play to him. Galway got the breaks, but I must pay tribute to the Galway team. The, you know, they really came out and played out their skins in the second half when the odds were against them, and uh, the wise old heads counted at the end, I thought myself. It would be nice to hear your comments about the other goalkeeper on the Galway side, John Collins. Oh yeah, and fair play to John. I mean, he has his critics, especially maybe uh, the media tend to uh, question his goalkeeping skills, but I know John well, and, and he, has, he, he has come to Galway's rescue again, and he can be proud of his display. And he, he, he really stood out today when, when the going got tough, you know. 
unusual first half in the sense that the Tipperary defence held the Galway forwards. In fact, it was only the half-backs, the full-back and the midfielder who got most of the scores. Right, well, I don't think when post-mortems take place about this All-Ireland, I don't think anybody will point a finger at any of our backs or goalkeeper for, uh, for us not succeeding. Um, our problems were, were from there up, and uh, that's the area we were concerned about. That's the area we were working on, and uh, it didn't happen, but maybe. Minutes after the game, Nicholas, not e easy to get your thoughts together. Disappointment, clearly. But I bet you thought you were going to get a goal near the end still. Yeah, well, I don't think there was anything in it, like, up to the last minute or two. But we hadn't been getting, you know, you just weren't getting the breaks. And things weren't really going that well for us up, up front. But, you know, Lane's goal then killed it off. I don't know how much was left when, when they got the goal, but that was the, the death nail, really. Well, John Commons was breaking your heart, and Tony Keady in particular. Yeah, I think John Commons made a couple of vital saves. Had one of those gone in, maybe the, maybe things could have been different. I think. You said there it's difficult to come back, but not when you're young lads like you guys. Oh uh, yeah, but I suppose like when you were beaten, we were beaten last year, but in the semi-final we were beaten again today. It's, it's, at this moment, it's very hard to come back. But I suppose when I mean, a couple of months go by, you, you seem to forget about it. Of course, we lift ourselves. It's only a game, and next year is a new year, and uh, probably the people who are really disappointed by it, the supporters. I mean. They have supported us through thick and thin, and I can guarantee every Tipperary supporter we'll be back next year and we'll bring back the cup, and uh, there will be no stopping us. We, we've learned from our experience. They have a lot of hard work to do, Jimmy. A lot of hard work. Uh, but uh, if they're men, the point I made, if they're men, they'll be back. If they're not, they don't deserve to win the All-Ireland. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of broken hearts around Tipperary tonight, but I'm sure also that the summer of 89 will bring new hope and new expectations. Now let me remind you once again that our phone lines are open to you if you have an opinion on today's game or indeed on the programme tonight. We have a lot of calls coming in already. We'll be getting to some of the points being made in those calls later on. Now the phone number to ring is 01616 000. That's 01616 000. Still to come on the Sunday game, we have our big match analysis. And remember, we have also to name our Sunday able to see the match. Now, newsroom reporter Verwin Jones talked to some of those who left Croke Park without actually seeing the game this afternoon. Why are you leaving this match? There's absolutely no way to see anything up there. They've obviously awesome, sold too many tickets. We couldn't get in. It's signed by the cars, but we couldn't get in. And why did you ask them to do that? Because we wanted Croke. I played football all over the world, and I have never ever in my life seen conditions like this. It's dangerous, it's hazardous, and it's very disappointing. The cable has come out. Why? Oh, well, tickets. You can't see them, much. You can't get burned in, in it. There's people going in and coming back out. There's somebody going to be killed down there. There hasn't been any problem with the allocation of tickets. A number of people haven't cooperated on the terraces with the stewards, and that has caused the backlog of people who didn't uh, have access to the canal end. Yes, indeed, an awful lot of annoyed people at uh, Croke Park this afternoon. Well, now, let me turn to our panellists tonight on the Sunday game, to Donald O'Grady, and as I introduced earlier, Eamon Cregan, back with us again tonight. Gentlemen, you're both very welcome. Donald, your views on this afternoon's All-Ireland Final first. Well, it was a case of the better team won, and I was surprised, really, in the end, that Galway didn't win by more. I thought they were over-tip all through, really. Tip just hadn't the experience, they hadn't the strength, um, they hadn't the hurling ability, and... Um, that was basically it. Eamon, would you agree with that assessment? I would, yes, I would definitely agree with that because I think on the run of play, Tipper or Galway were the better side. There's no doubt about that. And uh, as Don said, they should have won by more. Babs Keating, uh, in the little piece we saw there, seemed to suggest that things had gone wrong for Tipper, that they did not play up to their potential. Uh, was that your feeling of it? Well, I think experience had a lot to do with it. It was easily known Galway were there for the fourth time on the trot. And uh, this was Tipperary's first experience in a, in a long time in Croke Park in an All-Ireland final. Um, a number of examples were one no lane on four occasions ran down the right wing, picked up a ball and crossed the ball right across the other side of the field and Galway centre field men were coming through. Now, the Tipperary midfield weren't experienced enough to see this happening. Another case was Aidan Ryan drifted off out the field and left Sylvie behind. Now, Sylvie didn't go further than 40 yards and Aidan Ryan was poking the ball into where Sylvie was standing. And that's, that's inexperience. Well, Donald, mind you, it could also be said, had Galway lost this match this afternoon, many of the same criticisms might be levelled against them by their supporters and felt by their management, because they played well at times, and at other times, well, perhaps not as, as well as they would have expected to. Well, um, I think they had problems from midfield up, all right. 
their, their hallmark was a kind of a running game. They used the hand pass a lot. They have great pace in the wings. And we saw a few good examples of where they, they worked the ball very well. Martin Ochten has the ball about 70 yards, half a line there, gives it away up. Now, Ian Ryan is under pressure here, but does the right thing, holds onto the ball and leaves it out. There's Martin Ochten again. Great score. That was a great that was a great bit of play. The second point for Galbraith was one of the best pieces of play that, that we saw from them in the afternoon. But this then, in contrast, is infuriating really for, for team management. Just, it annoys me really when I see it. They're mm -hmm. static, standing around, passing the ball from one to the other, and eventually they set one another up, and that's it. That's the that's the fruit there of their labours, really. You get a hospital yeah, was, pass at the end. Yes, it was an amazing amount of fiddling yeah. around going on, I thought, at Croke Park this afternoon. Now, Eamon was talking about Tipperary's inexperience, and obviously this had to have played a big factor in it, because the one thing that Tipperary couldn't have had going into this All-Ireland final was an All-Ireland final experience, and Galway have had plenty of them. That's true, that was Galway's fourth, and it was even though Tip had been built up, um, they still didn't do, do things. When you're, when you're playing, especially in the far line, it's a difficult place to play, but you must do things with purpose, you must do things with conviction. Aidan Ryan, who was out middle field, hits the ball straight into his own corner where Sylvia yeah. Lanan was standing. Again, Declan Ryan fails to pick it and just drives it in on the ground. There's Sylvia Lanan again to pick it up as a sweeper. Drive away, set up a great attack, Pat went on from that, drove the ball in 90 yards. Th these are the little things that cost Tip um, problems. They were very tense at the beginning and they didn't relieve the tension by that type of play, really. Of course, Eamon, it was a tense game all the way through, especially if you were from either of the participating counties. And that, you know, even to experienced teams, I'd, I would reckon, when the game was so finely felt in the balance. Last year, that was the case between Galway and Kilkenny as well. That's true. I think the hype for this year's All-Ireland final was unbelievable. You know, that everybody was talking about it. The demand for tickets was unbelievable as well, as I well know, below Nina. But um, I don't think any of the two teams really settled. Tipperary definitely didn't settle. Galway only settled in the last 10 minutes. And uh, one would have thought that Galway would have settled a lot more easily than, than Tipperary. But um, the tension was there right through the end. And um, Galway didn't play to their full potential. Neither did Tip. One area, though, that I felt, Donald, that Galway had a clear advantage was there was a fresh enough breeze blowing into the railway end this afternoon. Now, in the first half, tip, tip backs were running an awful lot against the Galway forwards trying to keep up with them, but the Galway backs seemed to be far more solid in the second half. Well, the attribute that Galway have, they have great physical strength, they have great presence, and they have a great half-back line. The half-back line was really beaten today, and they did their job of blocking the ball. If it went past them, as some puckers carry, Sylvie Lang came in there and knocked the ball away. Ball comes through and there's Pete Finnery. If there was computer rankings really in this game, he'd be way ahead, like Sean yes. Kelly in sightly, a tremendous player. Oh, well, he is a super hurler. Same example here. Knocking the ball away, Tony Keady picks it up, drives it away. That's the half-back's job, that's the defensive job. They did superbly play in the second half. And that was the launching pad, really, for their for the great second half revival, if you like. I suppose, Donald, you could analyse this game or any All-Ireland final until the cows come home, but very often it can be one or two pucks of the ball that makes all the difference in the end. Now, the look didn't seem to go tips way in a couple of occasions today, but all credit to John Commons in certain situations. We made a couple of marvellous saves. Two great saves that, that really decided the match in the end. Tip or two points down when Pat Fox got the ball. And in fairness, Pat Fox... Great, great skill here, really, under pressure. He drop shots the ball, which is a great. John Commons saved it. But the thing about it here, Galway come away with the ball again. So John Commons, rather than just building it on it, out it went. Again, great save here under tremendous pressure from John Commons, out for 65. There were two things that decided the match near the end. I mean, um, you take a bit of luck, you make your own luck, they say, like, tremendous performance from him. Well, so then, Galway are the All-Ireland champions again. Now, maybe this is a difficult question to ask two monster men. Eamon Cregan, do you think Tipperary will be back again next year? Oh, there's no doubt about that. Like, they're on a crest of a wave at the moment. And it is easy for us here in the studio to have all the, the foresight, you know, tonight. But um, before the match, we didn't, we didn't know. I, I, people asked me my opinion who was going to win. I just didn't know. Um, definitely, there's, there's no doubt about that. They'll be back. Their forwards will have to improve. And their midfield, their midfields today were not in the game. And I think... If you notice, not once did Nick English get a proper ball into the forwards. He got one, I think, in the last minute. And that showed a lack of experience again, that they couldn't get the ball properly into their forwards. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose it all remains to be seen. Gentlemen, come uh, summer of 89, as I said earlier, for the moment, thank you. Know, we'll be back to our panellists again uh, very, very shortly, in actual fact. 
uh, in relation to the phone calls. Now, before we do that, there was one thing that struck me at Croke Park this afternoon, looking through the match programme. And uh, whoever compiled the match programme for this All-Ireland final, well, maybe they had a premonition of doom or whichever way you want to look at it from whichever county, because that was the caption on one of the pages, the agony and the ecstasy. And Babs Keating depicts the agony and Cyril Farrell the ecstasy. Who says these games are rigged indeed? <laughs> now, many callers, uh, to get onto our phone calls, question Nicholas English's method of free-taking. Now, they include uh, Tim Cronin from Dublin, who should be on the line to us right now. Hello, Tim. Yes. yes Hello, you, Michael. You had a point to make about the free-taking of Nicholas English this afternoon. That's right. I was watching him there today from the Canal End. And my opinion, I'd like to know the views of the two lads there, I thought he was fouling the ball each time he went to take a free puck. He appeared to be balancing it on his hurley before he hit the free. Yes. Now, my impression is you just lift it straight up and hit it. I think he was balancing the ball. All right, Tim, thank you very much for the call. Let me put that to our panellists, to Donald O'Grady, perhaps. Um, well, I didn't see anything I illegal in it, really. Um, it, it is only illegal if you bounce the ball in the hurley before you hit it. Uh, it's all a matter of technique. Some players like to lift it big from the goal. Nick just likes to leave it a little bit in the hurley beforehand. Uh, perfectly legal, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Good yes. example of a theory. Where he lets it on a little second or two to steady himself, but um, I don't see anything wrong with it. Yes, he has a kind of uh, a, a slow, lazy lift of the ball, but uh, at the same time, I suppose, Donald, a player of Nicholas English's skill, certainly doesn't need any extra little handles to get a good strike of the ball. No, but um, I think the point is, sometimes the point is made that, that he left it too long, but I think if you bounced it and then hit it, I think that, that's a free. You can't bounce it on the hurry, but you can lift it. Like okay, well now let's move on to uh, another aspect that has come up in our phone calls. This is the recurring problem of incursions onto the field of play by officials. Now, this figured very largely in the phone calls in actual fact. Babs Keating and Cyril Farrell were cited as the guilty men this time. And amongst those who spotted them uh, were John McCarthy of Cork, who should be on line two right now. Hello, John. Hello. Yes, John, you have a point to make about the incursions. Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment about the, the incursion of mentors onto the pitch. Especially when you're near the end of the game, when a goal was selected, came onto the pitch and um, headed straight to the referee. I think you know, this kind of thing is because gives the Gaelic Catholic Association a bad image, especially on a game that's been um, shown abroad, you know. It's something that you never see happen actually in a big event in soccer or rugby, you know. Okay, John, well, thank you very much for the call. This is one, actually, that I'd like to put to Eamon Cregan, because Eamon, as Limerick team manager, you've been accused of this in the past yourself. Do you want to give us the team manager's point of view? Well, first of all, soccer is a different game. They don't, they don't <coughs> switch positions. Rugby is a different game. The 15 players go out, go out as they stand. But from a, from a team manager's point of view, we're allowed to switch players from one position to another. Now... If you're on the sideline, it's impossible for the players, even 10 yards away from you, to hear you. Now, if you want to make a, make a move and you want to win in All-Ireland, you've got to make that move. And it doesn't matter, Tinker's course, whether you go out on the field or not. Now, he mentioned one, um, a selector coming on. He didn't mention Cyril Farrell or, or um, uh, Babs. Mm -hmm. Bab, both of those are entitled to come onto the field because they've got the armbands. Yes. But it is tis all very well for, for the... the Delegates or the Munster Council or Central Council say you can't run onto the field. But if changes have to be made, the player has got to hear what the change is and therefore somebody has got to go onto the field to make it. Now, the two people designated to go on were Babs 1 and Cyril Farrell 2. Now, Cyril Farrell <laughs> spent a lot of time on the field, right? But um, I don't think he should have been on that much. But Galway won, so he doesn't mind. Sure, sure. OK, Eamon, well, I'm not going to make a comment on this one way or the other. We've given you the manager's point of view, so I hope that satisfies John McCarthy. Now, though, it's time for our Man of the Match selection from the 1988 All-Ireland Hurling Final. Now, the selection, of course, is made by Donald O'Grady, but the actual announcement of the winner for the All-Ireland Final Day was made a little bit earlier on by Ger Canning, and there was a surprise recipient. Thank you very much, Michael. Welcome to the Ashling Hotel, which is Galway's headquarters, and we have all their players and their supporters and mentors here with us for the announcement of the man of the match. Well, I think everybody here in the room will agree it was a marvellous team performance this afternoon, but in particular, I thought their defence was one of the strongest sectors of their team, and it's a defender we've chosen as our man of the match. The man of the match for the hurling final is Tony Keady. <laughs> Now, I should explain that Tony has gone straight into training for next year's final immediately after this one, and so Cyril Farrell is going to receive it on his behalf. Cyril, well done. Thank you very much, Thank you very much 
You have to be delighted winning two in a row. Will it now be three? Well, it's nice to win the two first, and uh, we'll celebrate with the two first. Three, well, it's up to the fellas. Keedy last week, I think, was talking about retiring at 24, so we'll have a chat with him tonight. <laughs> He's probably gone into training all right, like, you know, so maybe he'll be there next year, I don't know. Well, Tony Keedy, Galway and Cyril Farr, congratulations. Well done. Thank you very much, Mike. Yes, indeed. Cyril Farrell, the recipient of the Man of the Match Award for the 1988 final. But uh, Donald O'Grady, in your view and a lot of people's view, Tony Keady was actually the man who deserved it. He was actually, overall, um, I, I had to give it to Tony Keady. John Commons slightly behind him, Pat Malone, um, uh, uh, Michael McGrath in there with a the show as well. But Tony Keady for his overall performance, tremendous. Did what a centre-back must do, clean up, tidy up around the place, long deliveries. Two great scores from long-range frees when, when Galway needed and I think, first-class display by him. And uh, I think he showed the, um, the determination that that really is the hallmark of Galway's performance. And Tony Keady, I'm sure, is still out training tonight for next year's final. Well, now, before Galway and Tipperary got into action at uh, Croke Park this afternoon, the stage was taken by the miners of Cork and Kilkenny. Now, they met each, each other in the final for the first time in ten years. And victory in this one as Donald O'Grady, I'm sure, would have to agree, deservedly, in the end, went to Kilkenny. It did, Michael, really. I mean, they, um, they just had too much power up front for Cork when it came down to it. Um, long ball here from, from Kilkenny, really, and they opened up the Cork to the fence. Some great running here by DJ Carey. And he passed to Charlie Cart, a lovely little jink away from the defence and sticks in the back of the net. That was a great score. Lovely running. comes up here in slow motion and you should watch really for the, the acceleration as he moves away and for the for the little swerves. This is a good little gutsy forward uh, this guy and he lovely, took this goal extremely well. Here. Watch the little swerve away here now from the from the defender and the acceleration then to take on the next man and go around him. That was absolutely brilliant. That was a great, great run. May have slightly exceeded the, the limit as regards the Well the goal was allowed <laughs> the, and I suppose that all that, that's all that counts. Yeah. This is a poor defensive mistake here by Cork, I thought they stood outside and DJ Carey slipped in and stuck it into the back of the net. But I think at that stage of the match, it was nearly all over because Cork, they just weren't in the game. They just hadn't the forward power, they hadn't the power around the middle of the field really to, to take them to victory. There was very little between these sides going into the final, but uh, as it turned out, Kilkenny proved to be the much the stronger team on the day, which surprised us uh, uh, quite a bit, I think. Well, they, they were physically stronger, but as well as that, Cock didn't show any great firepower or verve. They, they seemed to play at three-quarter pace. There they didn't seem to be any kind of um, a bit of cutting to their play. As, as Ground hurling was non-existent. They, they had to pick everything. There was an awful lot of mullicking by them, by both teams, really, and, uh, until Kilkenny got a grip in the last quarter. And little mistakes that cost Cock dear there. Great defence there by Ian Lyon and two good saves. And Paul oh, that's Tracy's, a well goal. Paul Tracy stuck in the back net. That, this actually is a feature. Paul Tracy came on as a sub and he was possibly one of the most effective Kilkenny forwards there, really. His strength, he came in corner forward and switched in full forward. He gave, he gave a great display, really, when he mm -hmm. came in. He contested everything and got the last goal and he was instrumental in a couple of scores as well before that. But um, good work by the Cork goalkeeper. A little unlucky here not, not to clear the ball, but when it's there, well, they put it away well. All in all, Cork would have no problems. The Mainter, Castle Comber, August Nadine Ayala, Scalum, and Kurumsa of Rana of Erin Kirkwenny. Patches. Congratulations then to Patsy Brophy and to the Kilkenny minor team. Now let's take a check on the two big scorelines today in Hurling. And a check again on that All Ireland senior final scoreline. Galway, 115, Tipperary, 14 points. And in the minor final, it ended up Kilkenny 313, Cork 12 points. Now for a look at some of the other sports news of the day. In athletics, the big talking point today was the omission of Eamon Coughlin from the Irish Olympic team for Seoul. A very annoyed Coughlin, speaking from his home in New York, said that he was baffled and stunned by the decision of the Irish Olympic Council. And indeed, BLE has called on the OCI to justify publicly their decision. In golf, the European Masters in Switzerland was won by Chris Moody of England with an aggregate score of 20 under par. He won by one stroke from Seve Ballesteros, Ian Woosnam and Anders Forsbrand. Ronan Rafferty was the best of the Irish challengers. He finished in sixth place at 16 under par. Well, next to racing and here with a report on the big meeting at the Phoenix Park today is Robert Hall.
It was a warm, sunny afternoon for one of the big European middle distance races, the Phoenix Champion Stakes, for which nine went to post. Well, there were five overseas challengers, the mighty Triptyque from France, four challengers from England, a top-class field, and a superb finish. Into the turn across the top of the course. Gallitzin is the leader by about half a length from Shady Heights in second, a length back to Indian Skimmer the Grey, two lengths then to Lord Bud as they make the bend into the straight. Persian Heights going very smoothly on the outside. They're turning in now towards the uh, straight, and as they do so, it's still Gallitzin the leader from uh, Shady Heights in second place, Indian Skimmer a couple of lengths back. Behind Indian Skimmer is Lord Bud, and they're straightening up with uh, just over half a mile to cover. And it's Gallitzin the leader with uh, Shady Heights in second, Indian Skimmer three. They're followed by Persian Heights on the inside is Lord Bud. Just behind these is Curio, trusted partners on the outside of Fair Judgment, and Triptych has dropped back to be last. Racing now towards the three marker, and it's uh, Gallitzin on the inside from Shady Heights in the noseband, Indian Skimmer. Then Lord Bud, just in behind these is Fair Judgment. They've two and a half furlongs to race in the Phoenix Champion Stakes, and Indian Skimmer rages up on the outside to take it up. Indian Skimmer goes for home, chased by Persian Heights coming there on the outside. Then Shady Heights in three, Gallitzin four, Fair Judgment five. Here comes Triptych with a strong run, but it's Indian Skimmer, the leader, as they race into the final furlong from Shady Heights on the inside, trying to rally Persian Heights three. Triptych's coming home really well on the outside. Indian Skimmer is the leader from Shady Shady Heights and Triptych is bearing down on them as they race to the line. Indian Skimmer, the leader, pushed out by Michael Roberts. She's going to win it. Indian Skimmer wins it for Henry Cecil. Shady Heights is second. Triptych is three. Close to fourth between Persian Heights and Lord Bud. Then Fair Judgment. Trusted partner. Behind trusted partner Galitzin and finally Curio. So, and there's a check on the winners then at the Phoenix Park today, the two o'clock race.